What's up everybody? My name is Dr. Daniel Ricciardi. I am a functional medicine practitioner, pharmacist, and fitness enthusiast. I help clients resolve symptoms of SIBO and other gut-related conditions, things along the line of just preventing unwanted bloating that's very distracting to your daily routine, not knowing what to eat, what foods are safe, not liking how bloated your midsection looks, and just in general, not knowing what plan of action to take to get rid of these symptoms. I'm actually recording this from my parents' house in Buffalo, New York today. I'm in my mom's office. She's a speech pathologist. You can kind of see from the diplomas and whatnot here, those are not mine. So anyway, let's get started. All right, so the title of this video is Betaine HCL and Stomach Acid Support Bad for SIBO. As you probably know by this point, having strong stomach acid is incredibly important for proper digestion, absorption of nutrients, great for gut health, and just overall health in general. This betaine HCL with pepsin or an apple cider vinegar, these are things that are very frequently used by functional medicine practitioners such as myself. They've been very commonly used for a ton of gut conditions, including SIBO. However, there has been some new data that's just been released, and some of the results are a little bit surprising. I know I was definitely taken aback by the results, and I think you possibly will be as well. So I'm going to share this new info with you, and then kind of the question that we're kind of going to be asking is, is betaine HCL with pepsin, is, is HCL apple cider vinegar, are they helpful with SIBO? So this brand new data that was just released was done by a team led by Dr. Mark Pimentel. He is a well-known SIBO expert and researcher. There were several key discoveries from this research. I am gonna go over one particular one of them today, which is basically how hydrogen gas, how it kind of fits in to the whole SIBO dynamic and explain some things that maybe we know now that we didn't previously know about hydrogen gas and what to do with it. Ultimately, it's going to answer the question, should you avoid stomach acid boosting supplements while you're treating yourself for SIBO, while you're in the middle of that treatment? So today it's generally accepted that there's three different types of SIBO. There's the hydrogen dominant SIBO, there's the methane dominant SIBO, which is kind of more being referred to now as IMO or intestinal methanogen overgrowth, and then the third one or newer one in the last couple of years was hydrogen sulfide SIBO. So we're going to start first with that hydrogen dominant SIBO. Hydrogen, like methane, has always been one of those initial two gases that we have been able to measure on a hydrogen breath test. If you're new to breath testing, they work by first having the patient consume a certain portion of sugar, and that may be either lactulose or glucose, depending on which you do. The results are typically similar with each. After you consume that sugar, any bacteria that is in your small intestines can actually convert this sugar into hydrogen gas. As you can see, if there's a higher amount of bacteria in your small intestine, you can get a higher level of hydrogen gas when you're exhaling it onto the instrument used for the test. A high reading, which was over 20 parts per million over 90 minutes, was the diagnostic criteria for hydrogen dominant SIBO. This hydrogen dominant SIBO has been thought to be associated with loose stools in diarrhea. However, the new research shows that it's not actually the hydrogen gas, which is the one that is causing these symptoms. Dr. Pimentel's research actually showed that whether the patient had about a 30 parts per million amount of hydrogen in the test or a 200, the results and how the patient were feeling weren't actually that different. But don't go thinking that hydrogen gas doesn't matter at all. This is far from the truth. Let me explain why. The other two types of SIBO, that methane dominant IMO or the hydrogen sulfide SIBO, have been found through the data to be the ones that are causing the symptoms. It's the methane that causes the constipation and the hydrogen sulfide that is causing diarrhea and loose stools, respectively. Both of these gases, methane and hydrogen SIBO, are directly influenced by the amount of hydrogen that is available. If you look at a molecule of methane, it includes four atoms of hydrogen, whereas if you look at a molecule of hydrogen sulfide, it does also include two atoms of hydrogen. From this, it's easy to understand that the more hydrogen gas that is available, the more likely that the more hydrogen sulfide and methane can be formed. So to put it in a metaphor, the hydrogen gas is the lighter fluid to the fire, so to speak. 
it is a very key factor, but it's not the ultimate reason. It's not the ultimate specific gas that is causing the uncomfortable abdominal symptoms, such as bloating gas, diarrhea, constipation. I won't get into much more about this today, but this is a key reason why doing a breath test such as the TRIO SMART breath test that measures all three gases is incredibly important. So you can see the big picture on what is going on in the intestines in terms of what gases are there. Moving on, how does betaine HCL with pepsin and how does apple cider vinegar, how do they factor into this whole big picture? As you can tell from the literal name, H stands for hydrogen. So HCL shows that we are adding hydrogen into the intestines when we are taking a supplement such as HCL. If we know that this hydrogen gas is the lighter fluid to the fire, we know by taking this supplement, we are just adding additional amount of hydrogen that can be used to form extra methane, that can be used to form extra hydrogen sulfide, and you can get those symptoms. According to this research, if you have SIBO right now, Supplementing with betaine HCL pepsin or apple cider vinegar does not appear to be a good idea. Again, I just want to be very clear. This is not to say that these are bad supplements in any means, but if you right now at this exact moment are trying to treat yourself for SIBO or have SIBO, if you take these supplements, you very well may be giving yourselves additional amount of symptoms. This is contrary to what I was taught and what I have always done as a functional medicine practitioner. It still stands that having good strong stomach acid is incredibly helpful for the majority of the people the majority of the time. It's also a great reminder that compared to a lot of other conditions, SIBO isn't really a very well understood disease dynamic. And I find it very likely that there's going to continue to be new discoveries and new things that we find out that will result in how we treat SIBO. I know that I'll change the way I practice and I'll always do this based on the newest, most accurate, up-to-date data so I can ensure that I'm giving patients the best possible treatment I can so they get the best possible results. On my full script account, which is in the link below, I've actually updated my empiric SIBO treatment regimen and I've removed the betaine HCL pepsin from that treatment regimen when you read down the supplements. Okay, so we've addressed taking additional stomach acid boosting supplements for SIBO and it appears that they don't seem to be in our best interest. So that begs the question, well, why don't we just do the opposite thing? Why don't we take a PPI, other stomach acid blockers that will reduce the amount of stomach acid? This should be better, right? So just a final point on this, Dr. Pimentel does actually state that when they did the breath testing for patients that had a methane overgrowth, it did seem to actually reduce the amount of methane in the intestines when PPIs were given. However, Dr. Pimentel does go on to urge patients that they should not go out and take a proton pump inhibitor or a stomach acid reducing medication just yet. As from this study that they've done, he claims that there is definitely not enough evidence at this time to make a determination. So at the moment, I would not take the stomach acid boosting supplement like his HCL, but I would also not take a proton pump inhibitor or acid reducing medication according to this recent data. That is all for today. I'll make sure to keep you updated on the best and most recent data that comes out so you're always in the loop on what the best things to do for SIBO are. If you learned something from this video or enjoyed it, please like and subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. And leave your questions below on the chat thread. I'll answer them as promptly as possible. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you again next week, Monday at 6 p.m. Central Time.